Hello, and welcome to this exciting presentation where we're going to explore a groundbreaking AI technology, generative AI, and its impact on the future of work, and more specifically, intrinsic value investing. Today, we're on the brink of a new era in artificial intelligence, and one of the pioneers of this technological revolution is none other than NVIDIA. To paraphrase their CEO, Jensen Huang, there is no wrong way to use generative AI since it adapts to your needs. Today, we will put this theory to the test as we delve deep into an intriguing finding. We found that asking ChatGPT to work step-by-step, -step, a common prompting technique, can surprisingly degrade its performance. ChatGPT has dramatically changed Amicus AI by giving our purpose-built NLU technology for intrinsic value investing a run for its money. In the current presentation, we build off earlier work on using ChatGPT for value investing to deep dive into a counterintuitive result. Against expectations, asking ChatGPT to work step by step, a common prompting technique actually degrades performance. More accurately, ChatGPT is able to perform better when we let it do end to end analysis in an almost intuitive fashion, making investment ratings in the style of investing rates like Warren Buffett. We ran four additional experiments on the latest data from the past week comparing our standard prompt, asking to invest like Warren Buffett and whether to think step by step. The results were shocking. And while Amicus AI has the advantage of analyzing intrinsic value metrics in aggregate, we have to give kudos to the achievement of ChatGPT out of the box. So without further ado, let's delve into the details and discuss these unexpected and fascinating results. Now we all know the old adage, cash is king, but what does this really mean? And why is it especially crucial in a high interest rate environment? When we talk about cash is king, we're referring to the power and flexibility that a company with strong free cash flows possesses. In a high interest rate environment, borrowing becomes more expensive and businesses without strong cash flows can struggle to stay afloat. However, those with robust free cash flows are more capable of navigating through such financial turbulence. They can afford to pay down their debt, reinvest in their business, and maintain or even increase dividends to shareholders. This kind of financial strength provides a company with a competitive advantage, making them the kings of their respective industries. So as interest rates rise, Investors often look for companies with strong free cash flow as a safe bet for their investments. Could we imagine a financial analyst to consider free cash flow? Using ChatGPT involves something we'll call prompt engineering. It involves crafting the right questions or prompts to get the most useful responses from AI models. One of the most common tricks used in this field is the chain of thought prompting. Essentially, this technique is akin to guiding a student through a complex problem step by step. It involves asking the AI to think sequentially through the problem, breaking it down into manageable parts. This approach has been widely used and is often beneficial in many applications. However, as we've discovered in our experiments, it doesn't always lead to the best results. So we decided to put this theory to the test. We came up with four different prompts for ChatGPT. Some of these asked it to think step by step, and others allowed it to analyze the problem end to end, and the results were nothing short of astonishing. It turns out that ChatGPT performed better when we allowed it to do an end to end analysis rather than guiding it step by step, and to our surprise, asking it to think like Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of all time, actually improved the results. However, adding think step by step to the prompt seemed to have the opposite effect and actually degraded performance. So it seems that ChatGPT, when left to think imaginatively, can deliver more accurate and useful results. Let's dive into the four actual prompts. The bottom right prompt is the vanilla prompt. The first prompt adds the step-by-step -step prompt, and the second adds both step-by-step -step prompt and instructions to personify Warren Buffett, while the third prompt only has the Buffett instructions. We can summarize the four models using this feature grid. And here are the prompts. The vanilla prompt I'll read off. Imagine you're a financial analyst AI. Consider the following company financial filings with respect to common intrinsic value metrics, such as free cash flow yield, profit margin, etc. 
give a ranking to the company from A grade, which means top quintile, to F grade, which means bottom quintile, in the format grade is. Then give a short less than six sentence explanation why. Make sure to start with grade is. And finally, we'll highlight the steps that we add. So as you can see in this prompt, we add the phrase think step by step. And then in the prompts that tell to imp uh, personify Warren Buffett, we say, imagine you're an expert intrinsic value investor, Warren Buffett. Now let's examine the results. We repeat our past experiment where we vary the temperature parameter from zero to one. If you don't recall the effect of the temperature parameter, review our original chat GPT for investing benchmark. We present the results across all four prompts. The last video showed us that we really should concentrate on temperatures between 0.5 and 0.7 for best results. In some ways, this is related to our finding here that a little bit of creativity and leeway in the generation leads to the best results. In particular, we're trying to identify models that have high accuracy and MCC which is a sort of multi-class F1 score. We get a wild result. We generally find prompt three is best with the highest MCC value of 0.09 and accuracy of 25%. The Warren Buffett and no think by step by step version. Adding step by step degrades performance from the vanilla prompt from an MCC of 0.06 to 0.03 and using the step by step and Warren Buffett prompt is slightly better than the vanilla at 23% versus 22% accuracy, but perhaps not conclusively so. Don't forget to note that the y-axis has shifted upward here on the Buffett-only prompt, so it's really clear that the higher scale on the y-axis implies that the Buffett prompt is best. Let's take a moment to discuss how our system, Amicus AI, operates. Unlike ChatGPT, Amicus AI uses an ensemble of submodels that focuses on various intrinsic value metrics. This approach allows us to dig deeper into the financial health of a company and consider multiple factors at once. In our most recent ratings, we noticed that free cash flow was a particularly strong metric. This fits in perfectly with our earlier discussion on why cash is king in the current high interest rate environment. A company's free cash flow gives us a direct insight into its financial health and stability and our model's attention on this metric underscores its importance in determining the intrinsic value of a company. It's a testament to the power of our ensemble approach, which allows us to capture such nuances and deliver accurate ratings. But while ChatGPT's performance has been impressive, it's important to note that it's not without its limitations. Currently, ChatGPT via API only looks at one company filing at a time and makes general inferences based on that and its knowledge base. On the other hand, Amicus AI has the advantage of a more holistic market level view since it's architected with model training, meaning the data from the entire market adjusts the model weights for a refined view. This allows it to draw insights and make comparisons across multiple companies, sectors, and market conditions, providing a more comprehensive analysis. This got us thinking, what if we could combine the best of both worlds what if we could train a generative AI model that can provide a market level view similar to Amicus AI, but with the flexibility and adaptability of ChatGPT? Despite the limitations of the GPT API, such as the maximum to token count for input and response, as well as the cost, we believe this idea has potential. As technology advances, these constraints will likely ease, opening up new possibilities for AI in value investing. We're already working on this, and our initial results are promising. With the current constraints, we expect GPT-4, the latest version of the model, to perform slightly worse than our purpose-built Amicus AI model, and we expect to boost further beyond the Amicus model using our generative implementation. Looking forward, we are excited about the potential of incorporating GPT-4 into our workflow. We envision a system that combines the strengths of both approaches, providing the depth and accuracy of Amicus AI and the versatility and adaptability of GPT-4. To this end, we have been manually labeling a vast data set of over 1,300 transcripts, equivalent to over 60,000 pages of reading, to train our models. The limitations for the API 
which is 4,097 tokens for input and response for 3.5 Turbo, and 32,000 for the GPT-4 API, and also GPT-4 is more than 10x more expensive. Each filing is about 200,000 tokens, so that's $12 per security rating. One batch of the top 1,000 companies is about $12,000, and that's presumably only for one quarter. We didn't present experiments on GPT-4 here yet as we're waiting on credits promised to us. Our experiments here cost $32 and would be about $4,000 on GPT-4. If we incorporated GPT-4 in our workflow, we would ensemble the three approaches to get the strengths of all, including the clear financial metric identification from Amicus models. Today, we've taken a fascinating journey through the intersection of AI and intrinsic value investing. We've seen how a revolutionary technology like ChatGPT can challenge conventional wisdom and deliver surprising results. We've also explored the unique strengths of our own Amicus AI model and shared our vision for the future. There's no doubt that AI will continue to reshape the landscape of value investing and we can't wait to see what the future holds. We should take a moment to reflect on the Buffett prompt. Why did we even think to go this route? The answer really has to do with why we founded Amicus to serve clients. Buffett, one of the greatest investors, has a tongue-in-cheek algorithm for investing, which essentially goes like this. First, read a ton of financial filings. He's been quoted as saying, read 500 pages a day. Everyone can do it, but not many of you will. Supervise your reading of financial filings with intrinsic value metrics and use that to make your investment decisions. The co-founders of Amicus realized with the innovations in LLMs, it's for the first time possible to replicate Buffett's algorithm with rigorous machine learning. There are quirky aspects of Buffett's algorithm. It seems to imply a degree of general intelligence, again matching with the capability from LLMs. Secondly, when reading thousands of pages at a time, this greatly exceeds typical LLM context windows, meaning that it's important to use some method to preserve learning, in our case through the training process and model ensembling. Our method of training submodels and model ensembling is a way of dividing and conquering. No, even GPT-4 with the 32,000 context window, or roughly 140 pages at a time, isn't nearly large enough for what we want. We optimally would want a context window of 100 million words. Given such a large context window, thinking step by step becomes increasingly difficult. It's no wonder that it becomes an almost ineffable process, where leaps of logic are needed to pull together information across many domains. Other great investors such as Howard Marks and Charlie Munger confirm these expectations. Now we understand our latest results in context, that innovative thinking is at times required for investing. We'll continue our, to experiment, innovate, and push the boundaries of what's possible with AI by using our GPU cluster tr to train our own RL, HF, LLMs. We'll keep you updated on our progress and share our findings with you. So stay tuned for more exciting updates and developments from us. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your colleagues and friends, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on our latest discoveries. Until next time, thank you and goodbye.